All right, so what I've done is I've gone over to my email and I confirmed it, and uh, I'm going to go back to Pinterest here now. So uh, to navigate ourselves around a little bit first, let's get an overview about what the different screens of Pinterest look like so that we don't get lost, and then we'll actually start to use it. So you can always click the little P icon, the Pinterest icon at the top left, to take you to your home stream. That's the stream where you see the content of those that you follow. There's going to be a search thing that we'll look at a little later. And then on the top right, you have your company's name. If you click on your company's name, then the screen switches to your profile. And then it shows you that's your address. So notice it's still pretty empty for me because I haven't done anything yet. But what's also important to see on this screen is here's your edit profile and also this little gear for options. If you click that, you'll see other account settings that we'll look at later. Tips for your business. Again, you should go and read what the what Pinterest itself is telling you. Analytics, you know, statistics, we'll look at that later, and then log out. So if you need to log out, you'll see that it's kind of hidden down here. You have to go to your main profile page here, and then the gear, and you'll have log out. The other screen for Pinterest is this little like uh, yin and yang of uh, pins. Those are your notifications. If you click that, nothing's really notifying you, but that's your news that will tell you someone liked your pin, someone commented on your pin, someone followed you. That's going to happen up here on this news. Up on search, we can type various search terms. We'll look at that in a moment. And then at the end of the search bar here, there's these three little lines, more, sort of like more options. If you click that, it says, well, take me to see content related to this topic such as food and drink. And so here, content related to food and drink appears. Depending on the section, you might even have related interests. Not everyone has it, but healthy eating, nutrition, desserts. And basically what's happening is that we're seeing these sections, so I want to see uh, healthy snacks. And this is going to be under food and, food and drink, but then healthy snacks. So I'm going to go back here to just the top level, food and drink. Okay, so what's the point? Again, people are putting content, maybe something that stands out, recipes, infographics, um, pictures showing off their wares, and then usually there's a link. Uh, either to who who pinned it or, or, or where it came from. Such as, this dark chocolate bark is full of healthy skin-boosting flavanols and chia seeds. Chia seeds. So I can click and do various interactions. So let's try this out. Uh, anything that you see here, um, if you hover over anything, you'll see these actions appear. And this is like the other networks. You can like, comment, etc., etc. Also, you get a little magnifying glass. So ignore those buttons at the top for the moment, but click on the picture with your magnifying glass. What happens is then the, the picture itself takes the focus of the screen. You have a little close bu uh, button at the top right. But then the picture shows up nice and big and the details of it and then found on paleocuisine122blogspot.com. If, if, if this content was pinned from some external website, it'll have a link back to it. Again, this is pretty automatic. Who pinned it? Well, Robin, one day ago. And look at something else. Crock-Pot crock Coca-Cola Barbecue Chicken. I click on that. Same thing. This came from thefugalgirls.com by Amber Lauer 11 weeks ago. Uh, 
Honey Crisp Apple Cider Sangria. I can click on it, view it, etc. Found on completerecipes.com. Okay, so we can look at an item in full, or we can look at it here. And what we can do here is a couple of things also. We've got pin it, and then we've got um, the favorite, or the like, here. So if you click on that, the little heart, we've given them a like. I forget the exact name that they give it, the like or a love or a favorite or whatever they call it, but a like. And what happened is then that Kelly Marinaro got a notification up on her little notification window up here. It turns red and, it, and it's telling her she's got some activity. So perhaps we got her attention. Jalapeno roasted soup, I like that, so I'll click like. So the lowest level you can do usually on these networks is a, sort, is a like. You've given that content some sort of endorsement. We want that too eventually. We want our content to get liked and so forth. Well, uh, social network. Social. You do it, it'll probably happen to you. So I'm going to like a couple of things. Peppermint candy Christmas ornaments. So after you hang them up on the tree, you can eat them. All right, so one level above that is pin it. That is basically like a share or a retweet on the other networks in that you take someone else's content and post it on your profile for your followers to see. So let's say the cinnamon French toast with cream cheese glaze. I think um, dinner can't come soon enough. Uh, this I want to, to spread it. We'll do pin it. Question? If I pin something, now, can I pick it off later? You can. Yeah, so maybe for some practice we should all do this. So I'm going to click pin it on anything that you see here. You can always unpin it and remove it. I'm going to select pin it. You collect your pins on boards, so everyone, so everything's nice and organized. So this is a little bit of planning that you might want to do, but it can happen organically. Let's say for my bakery, I'm going to share content that is, of course, baked goods, but that could include cookies, cakes, pies, um, Thanksgiving uh, baked goods, Christmas baked goods, Arbor Day baked goods, etc. I can have things to organize. Those are my boards. I don't have any boards at the moment, so it says create your first board. I'm going to select that, and it gives me ideas, perhaps things to wear, recipes to cook, or of course create my own. So I'm going to say this. Let's say I'm going to share, I've got a lot of content to share. So much that I can even organize like this. Anything related to cinnamon is going to be added to this board. Cinnamon cookies, French toast, pancakes, everything French toast. You can call it that. Everything, everything cinnamon. So this pin, I'm going to pin it to my board where I collect different things. Make a board for each thing you're into. Recipes to try, places to visit, whatever inspires you most. Again, pay attention to that terminology. Action verbs. To try, to visit, to inspire. You can create as many as you want, I think. Like thousands of boards if you want. I don't know if there's a limit. Probably. But you probably won't reach it. There's the, pi there's the picture, there's the pin. Here's the description that came with it, which you can leave alone or edit. I recommend, whenever feasible, whatever makes sense, add a little bit to it. Add your own mark to the content. Because the picture will remain the same, the link to the original source will remain the same, but for you to build a presence and get followers, you know, inject your personality, your company style, <coughs> add something to it, just one little sentence either before or after what's already there. So I'm going to say uh, something perfect for a cold morning. And you can edit it however you want. P. 
pin it. So what comes up for a moment and it actually disappears, I'm not sure why. As soon as you add something, it might also suggest, well, perhaps you're also interested in that board of breakfast. And notice there was a follow there, and then it goes away. Uh, but I'll do it again over here. Let's say pumpkin muffins. I'm going to pin it. Uh, this is not related to cinnamon. I'll put it in mighty muffins. This time I'll leave the description as is. So what comes up is this, perhaps. Uh, I'll get back to that. What comes up is this. Hey, that, I kind of like cupcakes and muffins. I'll follow that. So now I'm gonna. So now I've followed that board, and I'm gonna see more of that content back on my home screen when I go back to the to the to the P. That's what I want eventually too. I want content that I'm putting out there. Someone finds that cupcake, they uh, they they pin that one cupcake, and Pinterest will automatically show you. Well, this was a put into the Mighty Muffins board. You know, 20 more things are there, and a person might follow that. So a person can follow the whole account, everything that they post, or they can follow individual boards. So even though I'm doing everything about bakery, perhaps people are really interested in my gluten-free baking, and I get a lot of followers of that board. So Pinterest is very different than the other networks in that regard, in that but if you follow someone on Twitter, you'll basically see everything they tweet. If you follow someone on Google Plus and Facebook, you basically see everything that they put out. But here, people can pick and choose. I only care about these dog toys from your pet shop. I don't care about the cat toys. So it behooves you to organize your content into that that people might be interested in following. Yes. So the creating another board is the same recipe. No, I put it in. I put two different. Let me go back over here. I can show you back on my profile. I've created two so far. Everything cinnamon and mighty muffins. Yes. But it was two copy. different pins. Yes, you copied from the other posts from somebody else's. Both of these are from somebody else's, yes. So we see a lot of redundancy. We could see redundancy, sure. There's hundreds of millions of people on Pinterest, however, with lots and lots of interests. So I feel I haven't really run into a lot of redundancy. There's just so much stuff out there. But in theory, you could. You could run into the same things. On different boards, yeah. So when you go to Civic, So you've you've selected pin it and then pin it. Oh. Where is sent? Oh, okay, I see. Yes, th yeah, this is different here. This is a different kind of thing. Send a message to your friends. So this is um, what Pinterest is trying to do is again create community they see what other networks have done, try to put their own spin on it. So here you would be sending you would be sending this out in different ways. For example, I'm putting a name here. Do you want to email this to someone? Yeah, start typing and then these options show up. So you can connect to people in other other networks, send them emails and such. Now the email is a little limiting because it has to be
I, I just sent that to myself to my email and then I'm gonna get the email but then it's limiting in that okay what can I do with it uh, if I'm on Pinterest then I have the full features to be able to like it and pin it and comment and all of that but if someone's not on Pinterest I don't think people are really gonna go out of their way then to create a new account especially to your friends and family so there is some limitation to that and it shows me here well you started a message conversation And it's going to show up there on the left side. So your friend has to be sent if they're interested to email you? No, I believe I'm going to get the email here, but if I want to do anything with it, like comment, okay. then I have to be on Pinterest. So, um, after I have uh, verified my email, I get more capabilities, so such as this, the best homemade hot cocoa recipe ever. If I click on that, then my screen looks a little different in that I've got the pin it button again, I've got like, visit site you know, which takes me to the original link. We'll see how to do that ourselves in a bit. Facebook share. Uh, so Olivia Ray has a board called Food, and this is some of the content there. If I like it, then I can click Follow. So hopefully I'm doing that myself so I can get people to follow me. We haven't posted our own content yet. We're getting to that. At the bottom then, it's got this stuff here, and then a place to add a comment. You might not have that until you verify your email. So I can say to follow Olivia Ray, and that means I'll follow all of her pin boards. But perhaps also, in addition to food, she's also got politics, and I'm not interested in that. So I can just go in and follow that particular board. And it also shows that originally that picture, that content, came from this other Pinterest user. So I can go to their profile and see what they've got, follow them, follow their boards. So there's a lot of connections built into Pinterest that I like. Once you start building a name for yourself and putting content out there, your thing will be connected to another thing and to another thing. Hopefully it gets you more traffic and followers. And so this will show me that this pin is also found on these other boards of other peoples, from Elise, from Sharon, Courtney, Kristen. And that these other things might be related. You have a better chance of your stuff find, coming out being related the more content you put. It's kind of a catch-22 self-fulfilling prophecy. You'll get more followers once you post more content. And you'll get, and you'll want to post more content as you get more followers. So, it's easy to go into any of this content and then start to pin other people's content. Uh, I believe I mentioned it in this class about the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 your own original content and 20% other people's content. So you do want to do both because at the beginning no one knows you. And if you're just posting your own stuff and no one knows you, you're not going to get any likes, comments, follows, or pins, repins. But if you start going in here and starting to start to like content, comment on stuff, pin other people's stuff, people get those notifications up at the top here. And then they might go into your profile and start to like your stuff, better yet, follow your stuff. That's why you want to have a dialogue.
All right, let's talk about adding content, adding your own content to Pinterest. There's a couple of ways to do it. We'll look at both. Question in the back over there, ladies? Question? Uh, another way to contribute to Pinterest is that you add your own content. And one of the ways is, let's say we've got a link from your website uh, with your content, or we can upload your content directly to Pinterest. I think it's a little more beneficial to add content that's already from your website because that'll give you the link back to your website. If you upload content from your computer, it doesn't inherently have that link. But we'll look at both ways. Uh, at the bottom right, do you see there's a little plus sign right there? Let's click on that plus. We have upload a pin, add from a website, create a board. So we'll try upload a pin first. Again, we can remove this stuff later. You probably don't have anything handy to, to upload for real, but we'll see how to do it, and then you can remove it if you want. I'm going to select upload a pin, upload an image right from your computer. So I'm going to choose an image, and if you want to just practice to upload something, on the left side here you can go to pictures, sample pictures, choose any picture. So I'm going to choose this picture of this dessert. So I will select to open that. Either add it to an existing board or create a new one. This is what's this pin about? So I can say whatever I want here. I'm going to add the link to my website there because notice in this method there's no uh, original starting point of this pin, meaning my website. I have to perhaps manually put it if I want. Pin it. You might have gotten this pop-up a few times before. This is going to ask you to add this to a map. This is useful if you are, <clears throat> you know, if you have a location, your, your business and such, uh, at an actual street address, you can add it to the map. Invite friends to pin. Well, this is saying, do you want to give other people the control to also add to this pin board? This is different than Twitter, uh, or specifically Google Plus and Facebook, in that you can add managers. Other people can log in and add to that account. Here, they do it by inviting people to the board itself. You can send an email to other people to manage this board. But again, they have to be on Pinterest. It's free to set up, of course. Select Done. If you go back to your... Let's do this now. Let's go back to our, our account name. So if you click on your account name, now your profile isn't as empty as it was before, perhaps. You know, you're your information that you added up here is listed and it's starting to show your content. If everything's still empty even though you added something, just try to refresh the screen to wake it up or reload.
And so here we have the ability to edit these boards. If you click edit on any one of these, then you can change its name, a description, category, You can add pins. Again, this is the way that you you get multiple managers, but you have people managing the boards themselves rather than the whole account. So here I also turned on add a map. And now this particular board has a little um, location pin up on the top. You click that, and then you go in here and add a place. I haven't seen the style of I haven't seen the map recently but I like its style. So again, you might not have anything that you really want to upload right now. Um but we saw there I can upload it directly from my computer. I can also go in and click to edit the particular pin. And we've got delete pin. So your own pins, you have the ability to delete it, to remove it. Okay, so uploading our own pins is pretty straightforward. Any questions on that so far? Notice when I actually go look at my pin, I added the link in my description, so it's an active link. People can click on that and it'll go there. Uh, but it doesn't look the same as the others that came from a website. It doesn't say, you know, what was it? Uh, original website or originating website, whatever it said. And visit website, it doesn't have that because we did it this way. Yes. Foursquare is a is like a, a social network, kind of like a Yelp about uh, location and restaurant reviews and, and all of that. And they have their own, you know, they're kind of like a rival to Yelp, although Yelp is more famous and, and powerful, I think. Did you do that or was it automatic? That was automatic when I told it that the location was San Diego. Nice. Mm -hmm. I got something similar. I put in the same picture as you, yeah. desert, Mm -hmm. I don't know, a lot of oh, really? Yeah, same, same here. Uh, it seems. 
it seems that the um, that, that the network is either reading or analyzing the picture and kind of seeing well it looks like it has sky and 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 land and such and perhaps give you those sorts of things or saw that there's blue and red in it and gave you related things. I read recently that they're trying to inc make their algorithm better in analyzing the photo like color wise and content wise so to show you more related content. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's look at another way where we can add content. This one uh, needs a little bit more setup. Um, so I'll show you here. If you click the plus, the other way is add from a website. This is the one I recommend a little more because this comes from your website, meaning it'll have a link back to your website. Richard? Yes. This picture? Yes. Well, uh, do you mean clicking the magnifying glass? That way? Or what other properties do you mean? On that, you have to do it outside of Pinterest. Uh, you have to go to the picture itself, and then you have to right-click it. So I, uh, I think you would have to download the picture first. I don't know if Pinterest has it built in yet, but you can right-click. Here I am in plain old Windows, and then I right-click it and go to Properties, and on the Mac, you should be able to do Command-I. And then here you go, and, and if it's got details about shutter speed and such, like this is copyright Corbis, then it'll show up in the properties. Thanks, Richard. So let's say I'm going to add... Oh, look at this. I've got a notification up here. So hopefully it's, it's safe for work. So I'm going to click on it, and let's see what that is. Tulips Boutique pinned your pin right now. Cool. So an account perhaps someone in here, um, pinned it. So what I could do is I've got some activity here, so this is a good digression because I could go to look at their um, profile. Tulip Boutique. And then of course do the, the actions of liking their content, following their boards. I'll click Follow. So what, what happened here is I followed those three boards, and now I'll get their content on my home screen. So let's say uh, we're going to add from website, and it says, well, what's the link? So you're going to need a link to whatever you're trying to post. So you could practice with something from your own website. I'm going to say, let's see what happens if I do this. I'm just going to put the address of one of my websites here. And what this does is Pinterest looks at that page <clears throat> and tries to find all of the pictures on that page. And then, from these pictures, I've got the pin it. It knows that I've already, or well not me, but it knows that from my website, other things have been posted. So over here, Scott Gilbert, from my website, pinned that picture. And Ralph Ott did that. And this other Victor's Bakery that I made for another class pinned that. And Aaron Alexander pinned that. So I like this. You feed it a link, your website or your address, anything, and then it tells you these are the pictures that you can pin onto Pinterest. And these are the ones that have already been pinned from other Pinterest users. Question? What if your website is shared by other companies? Well, your website is shared by five different It will, it, it depends on the website. I've had examples where I put in a link on a website and it shows me very little, like just one picture. So Pinterest will do its best to try to find all of the pictures. So it, it won't care 
who posted or who's who who is the controller of it, it'll just see these are the pictures that we are able to pin. So you will then most likely then want to choose your picture to add to Pinterest and ignore the others. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to add this picture to Pinterest from my website. So I'll select pin it. I'm going to add that picture from my website to a brand new board. I'm going to give it a description, the picture itself. On this one, I don't need to put my address here this time because it's giving it to me automatically because I pinned it from my website. So I'm going to write here, um, our favorite colors of fall. <clears throat> So I'm going to add it, I'm going to close that. If I go back to my account, I've got a brand new Fall Fun with one pin. If I look at the pin itself, there's the picture, and at the very top, Visit Site. It has built in back to my website. Below it, it also says found on vmcampus.com. If someone else comes upon that, then it'll go to my address. And notice also here, from more from VM Campus. So the more stuff from your website that is posted to Pinterest, the more this will show up for people. So it's got like this built-in um, advertising ability, Pinterest. You don't see that on the other networks yet, but you see that on Pinterest that once you sort of import your content from your website into Pinterest, it becomes part of the Pinterest ecosystem, and then it's got these built-in attribution features that now will entice people, let me go back to that website, I want to buy that. Or I like that picture and it's part of another board, let me follow that board. Let me follow that account. I want to know everything about them. So imagine you're putting the 80-20. 20% other people's content so you can get attention from other people, and then 80% your own content so those that follow you have something to, uh, some that you potentially to be followed for. And then you have to decide, well, inspirational pictures, pictures of the products, coupons, pictures of people using your product happily. <coughs> Just anything that you want to post visually, visual content. So we've looked at a couple of ways to share. We can share other people's content. We can share our own content. We saw here those two ways to do it, uploading and from a website. Let's take another break, and then we'll talk about more, what more we can do with Pinterest. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, how, OK, so if we've got a Pinterest and a Twitter and a Google Plus account, how, what's the best way to tie all those together to your website? Is there like a? When you say link, do you mean like you want to post something and it goes automatically to all of them? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, something when we come back that helps you do that. Definitely. Right now, we've only doing we're only doing it manually, which is more cumbersome. I'll show you some tools that'll help you manage all your social media when we come back. So we'll do ten minutes. We'll be back at two uh, twenty-six, and we'll go on.